the hello everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with part two of my June 2020 wrap-up I read a total of 12 books so if you are interested in seeing the first six I will leave part one down below but without further ado let us get started the first book I'm going to talk about is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adiere, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Years ago in Orishia, the magic was taken away by an evil king. Zeli has the opportunity to bring magic back with the help of her brother and the crown princess. Running from the crown prince, Zeli needs to perform a ceremony in order to bring the magic back to the magi before it's too late, and it's like the story of that. I actually like this a lot more than I originally thought I was going to. I instantly felt in love with the characters and their story. I loved the alternating point of views between Zeli, Inan, and Amari. I just thought every single one of them were really interesting to read from. I honestly have no idea who my favorite character was. Zeli was so fierce and loyal and just tried her hardest to do what she believed in. I think that Inan was a very complex character. I could never decide whether or not I trusted him and I really enjoyed watching how he developed throughout the story and trying to decide where his loyalties lied. And then Amari, I think, was a lot more than I thought she was originally going to be. I loved watching her grow as the story progressed and become more confident in herself. I think that the best part of this book were the relationships, not just like romantically, but also like the sibling relationships between the crown prince and princess and then Zeli and Zane. I think that it was so well done and they were both very different, but you could tell that they all cared about each other in their own unique ways. I also really like how the romance wasn't in your face. It was kind of put onto the back burner even though it was still present. I also really like the world building in this and learning more about the magi and the different magic that they could possess. I just thought this whole book was really well done and I'm super excited to pick up the sequel if I can find a copy of it like ASAP. The next book was 100% my favorite book of this month. I loved it so much. It is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Petro and I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. This book follows two sisters, Veronica and Val, who have only ever had each other to rely on. Veronica has wanted nothing more than to become a phoenix rider, but Val is determined to stick together and that's when Val betrays Veronica in a very big way and Val decides that she's going to take off and try to find the phoenix riders. Upon discovering that the phoenix riders only initiate men into their ranks, she decides that she is going to disguise herself as a boy in order to join them and that's when she becomes close to Tristan who is the son of the commander. Then her sister shows up unexpectedly and reveals her true identity and things get a little bit more complicated for her. This is another book that I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did. Like I had a good idea that I would have a good time reading it but I did not expect it to love it. I will say that the book was a little bit info dumpy at the beginning trying to sprinkle the history of the Phoenix Riders into the story, but I honestly think that it was done really well and it didn't really disrupt from the overall enjoyment of the book for me. I really like the alternating perspectives between Tristan, Val, and Sev. I was fully invested in all three of the characters' stories and I really like how all three of them intersected at some point throughout the story. I was a huge fan of Veronica. I think that she was such an amazing character. I found her to be so interesting and and to watch her development throughout the book was really great. I hated Val with a passion, which I understand was the point, but some of the things that she did were just cruel and just not okay. And it was really interesting to like see her try to justify it, and I'm shocked that Veronica put up with it for as long as she did. I absolutely fell in love with Tristan in this book. I think that he is just so soft and I just want to protect him at all costs. I just wanted to like hug him and let him know that he was good enough and I just loved watching him grow. I loved the development between him and Nick. I'm gonna say that he's a bisexual king even though like it's not canon. I'm saying it's a thing. 
I also really like learning more about Sev. He was a soldier that was a secret animage and I found that concept to be very interesting. I really liked seeing his relationship with Cade and I'm really hoping that there's more opportunity for that to grow and develop in the second book but we were kind of left on a little cliffhanger with that one. I loved the whole idea of the bond between human and phoenix. I thought it was really cool how they could speak to one another through the bond as well as feel like each other's emotions. I think that the whole concept of that was just so interesting and I'm really excited to pick up the second book just to see how it develops even more. I also did not see the ending coming whatsoever so that was like a moment for me so I am so excited to pick up the second book which I actually own already so I'm going to like dive into that as soon as possible because I need to know what happens with these characters because I just love them so much. The next book that I have is Black Wings Beating by Alex London. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Kylie and her twin brother Bryson who are both falconers. They are left with their father debt. Bryson absolutely loves being a falconer but Kylie wants nothing more than to be free and away from this field of work. Bryson ends up falling for a boy who ends up getting into a lot of trouble which means that he owes a lot of money. This causes the twins to set off on a very dangerous journey to try to catch the ghost eagle who is the bird who killed their father. Along the way they encounter some strangers that are trying to use Kylie's obscure power in order to help them win the upcoming war and it's like the story of that. My biggest complaint about this book was Bryson. I did not like him at all. He was so self-centered and just stuck up and felt entitled to everything that it just made me so angry to read about him. Like I was thinking that there would be some character development in the end. There was absolutely none. He's still a shitty person by the end of the book. I think that the relationship between Bryson and Damien was very toxic and the fact that the the whole story was based around the twins having to go off on this dangerous journey in order to save his ass just really rubbed me the wrong way. I also I really hope that Bryson ends up with somebody in the book. I don't want to say who it is since spoilers, but there is a second book to the series so I'm hoping that develops a little bit more. I also was not the biggest fan of Kylie only because she was constantly diminishing herself in order to make Bryson feel better about himself and it was just really disappointing because she could have been such a kick-ass character but I just like did not get that from her. I also really liked the idea of the falconry. I thought it was really interesting to learn about the different birds that these humans caught. I also kind of wanted more backstory about why this came to be a thing. I also was really intrigued with Kylie's ability to speak to the birds but we weren't really given more information on that other than she had this ability but she couldn't really control it. I think that the most redeeming part of this story were the owl mothers who lived like up in the mountains. I thought they were really cool and I'm really hoping that we see more of them in the next book. But yeah overall like three out of five stars it was mediocre at best. The next book I have is What Light by Jay Asher. I gave this three out of five stars. This book follows Sierra who lives on a Christmas tree farm in Oregon. Every winter they travel to California in order to sell these Christmas trees to the people. She usually keeps to herself when she goes to California but this year she ends up meeting a boy named Caleb with a dangerous past and as she gets to know Caleb and become closer to him she starts to fall for him and it's like the story of that. I liked this book but I don't think that it was anything super memorable. I liked the relationship between Sierra and Caleb. I really like that Sierra didn't jump to conclusions as soon as she heard from her friends about Caleb's past. She kind of waited for him to tell his story to her and then judged it based off of that. I was a big fan of Caleb. I think that he was very in tune with his emotions, which you know a lot of men are not, but I think that he was a big sweetheart, little cinnamon roll, and I wanted to protect him at all costs from the people of the town because they were big bullies and it really upset me. I think that the biggest complaint I had for this book were Sierra's parents. They were so overprotective it got a bit ridiculous. Like I understand that she is a young teenager and they want to protect her, but but also let her live a little. Like heartbreak is a part of life, especially when you are a young teenager, and it helps you to become the person that you will be as an adult. So I think that they needed to chill and let her like live at least a little bit more. That's just my opinion. Although it was like a super quick easy read. I flew through it in one sitting. I don't think it was anything memorable and I do think that it would be a pretty good book for like Christmas time to get you in the spirit but like I read this in June so it was like the totally wrong season so I don't know if that like influenced my rating but I just think it was like 
very average. The next book that I read is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Mary Barrow, who is a part of a society where you are determined your place based off of the color of your blood. So there are reds, who are often people who are living in poverty, and then there are the silvers who live lives of luxury, and they are also people who have superhero-like abilities. Mare steals from the rich in order to provide for her family, and on a chance encounter one day in the marketplace, she meets a person who ends up getting her a job as a servant in the royal palace. Meanwhile, there is an uprising the Reds are planning, and Mare needs to decide how she is going to get involved while still protecting her family, and it's like the story of that. I think that this book is very similar to a lot of books in this genre, but I still really enjoyed my time reading it. I, I mean, ultimately it was very predictable, but I still think that it was a fun time and it was a pretty good adventure story in my opinion. I really wish that we had more explanation about the Silvers and their like superhero abilities. I think that that was the most interesting part of the story. I think because there were so many variations of it, I just wanted to know more and more about it. I also I also was curious about how the reds and silvers came to be, like we never really got a reason why the society was the way that it was, it was just kind of a fact that it was, so I wish that there was a little bit more world building on that aspect. I'm definitely intrigued to see where the story goes from here, unfortunately I only have the second book in the series so I need to try to find the third and the fourth so that I can finish the whole thing and figure out what's gonna happen next. And then the final book that I read this month is Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Mina and the other girls who attend Innovative Academy and they have been taught their whole lives to be subservient and basically their whole purpose in life is to serve the men around them. But when secrets start to come to light about Innovative Academy and what goes on behind closed doors, the girls start to question everything that they've been taught and it's like the story of that. I was actually super excited to pick up this book because I read the program series by this author and absolutely fell in love with it, and I was not disappointed by this book either. I really enjoyed how the themes of misogyny and women's rights and like ethics were explored and dissected in this book. I think that it was so obvious to the reader about what was going on behind the doors of Innovative Academy was just disgusting and wrong, but because that was all that the girls ever knew, they didn't see the injustice of it all, and I think that that aspect of the book was also really interesting. My favorite part of the book was 100% the friendships between the girls at the academy. They were just so loyal to each other, and you could really tell that they cared for each other and that their friendships were just so strong. I think my biggest complaint of the book was Jackson and the romance. I think that it was kind of unnecessary, honestly. Jackson was just a boring character, and he just didn't really have a role other than, you know, being the person who brought everything to light, but also like, you didn't need the romance, like, you could have just had him be a person that was there and told the girls, like, he didn't need to be a love interest. I just think he was really underdeveloped, but that's like a whole other rant. Overall, I think that the book was a lot of fun, I'm definitely intrigued to see where the story goes from here, and yeah, four out of five stars. Alright everybody, so that was my wrap up part two for June 2020. If you're interested, check out part one down below, let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!